Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm back at the auction yard and we're gonna be taking a look at some auction cars today, which I'm really excited about. But before we get into the video, I did wanna make one quick announcement about my Patreon. So in the Patreon, what you get is you get exclusive access to more posts that I do outside of YouTube. And it's a cool way for you guys to connect with me through Discord. So the Discord server is something that my friends and I have been working on for the past couple weeks that's been slowly growing. And I'll make sure to link all that stuff down below. Really the whole reason why I created the Patreon is because this is what I do now full time. And for me to be able to keep providing you guys with content and take things to the next level, I'm gonna need your guys' help with this one. And really all it's gonna do in the meantime is just put gas in my car and be able to drive hours out to be able to attend all these vehicle auctions. And then the whole goal would be to be able to do stuff outside of that. So what I wanna do next is I wanna take a plane trip over to Japan to look at some JDM auction cars because I think that would be seriously awesome and be able to share that with you guys as well as uh, keep buying auction cars because uh, that's also something that I'm very passionate about. But with that being said, I'm sitting in an old Mercedes today. I'm in a Mercedes 420 SEL and I've actually done a video on this car and uh, maybe I can leave a link somewhere above but I keep coming back to this car because I like it so much. It's very luxurious and it's so quiet in here. Like, I wish there was a way that I could just like have this as an office, <laughs> if that would be ever possible. Cause this one is just in such good condition. It's got almost 300,000 miles. But before I start blabbering on about an old Mercedes, uh, maybe we should actually get out and start checking out some cars. So I'll see you guys in a sec. All right, so we're looking at a Toyota Yaris with a manual transmission. Lightweight, small. Yeah, I have to say, I already regret sitting down in this car because it smells like uh, Hong Kong in the summertime. <laughs> that was so bad. specific. <laughs> yeah, those childhood memories never go away. Wait, Hong Kong in the summer? Let, let, can I get a whiff of this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, if you want. You travel, really? you travel across the ocean just by sitting in this oh car. Oh my god, look at the seat. What is, oh, do I want to sit in that? I already sat my ass down there. Oh god, I guess I'm going in. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm looking at this Volkswagen Golf GTI. And this is like the absolute staple when it comes to German hot hatches. These are really fun little cars. And this one actually has a manual transmission. And when I first came up to the front of it, I was like, what's wrong with this thing? But it's when you make your way to the rear end of the car that things start to make a little bit of more sense. And unfortunately, this car looks like it was rear ended. But given that fact, I don't see that much structural damage that's happening here in the rear. Now, of course, this has been taken to a body shop and the real indicator as to why I think that is is because of all these markings. This is somebody giving out an estimate and probably as soon as the uh, estimate was given, the insurance company evaluated it, they deemed it a total loss, hence why it's here at the auctions. But for somebody to go out and repair this thing, this one looks like an easy fix. Now, there is a dent in the hatch, so this got pushed in just a little bit. Not too bad though, really. I mean, you could even pull this out yourself. What you're actually looking for is you're looking for any of this to be punched in. And what I see right here, you see this little kink right here? This is where I believe either the rear bumper or maybe a part of the rear bumper reinforcement comes into contact because I do see these threads. But this is such a light hit that you would be able to pull this out. You could either do it by yourself or you could take it to a body shop, but this looks like very minor damage. So in the grand scheme of things, it looks a lot worse than it actually is. And when I open the door on the inside, I see that it has all the parts you would need to put this back together. And even the rear bumper reinforcement itself looks really straight. So you would be able to salvage this for sure. And I mean, the GTIs, you know, it's one of the top trim levels for these cars. So it's got the really nice seats. It's got the six speed manual. It's even got a really nice stereo. I don't know what brand this is. It might be a little bit third party action, but I mean, who cares? This would be a really fun daily and it doesn't smell too bad in here. I mean, they got a bunch of different uh, air fresheners. <laughs> what is this stuff? Actually, the Snoopy one's pretty cool. I like that one a lot. And uh, somebody maybe was kind of a enthusiast. I think this is like one of those uh, holders if you're like in a drift car. I think that's like a very Japanese thing though. The the headliner doesn't look too hot. It looks like whoever put the parts back there when it comes to the rear cargo cover, they kind of made a mess of it, which is very unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Let's pop open the hood and take a look at the engine. I already tried to fire this one up. It does have the key, but the, of course the battery's dead because I'm looking at it and I seem to have the worst look in the world when it comes to looking at some of these auction cars. Yeah, I mean, 
four cylinder turbo. Pretty typical stuff here. I don't see anything that's out of place. The oil filter looks relatively new, so that looks like a positive sign. The battery looks like it hasn't been tampered with. There's not too much corrosion on the terminals. That's usually a sign when a car has been sitting for a while. And yeah, I mean, this looks really straightforward. If I was looking for a car, this is something I would definitely bid on. But again, this might go for a lot. I'm sure there's a lot of people there thinking the same thing when they see this car, but you never know. And uh, that's a pretty common question I get from the auction videos itself is how much, how much? But there's no way for me to really be able to tell you guys because you would have to sit there in real time to see how all the things go down here. I like this one a lot. This is pretty cool. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. All right guys, this is a little bit of an honorable mention, but I kind of wanted to open up the dialogue to see if you guys would be interested in stuff besides just, you know, your typical cars and trucks. Because at this auction in particular, there's actually a bunch of motorcycles, and I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. The only thing is I don't know too much about these things. Uh, this was something that I'll probably just have to learn as I go. But I mean, this Polaris RZR XP 1000 looks really mint. And I'm kind of wondering why it's here at the auctions. I don't know if maybe it's uh, something due to mechanical damage or something like that. But I, the whole reason I know about these side-by-sides is actually from rallycross events. Because my friends and I, we go rallycrossing pretty often. And these things are really good fun. I mean, I've just been uh, somebody that's ridden along and these things are properly fast. And especially on a muddy day, these things get caked up in mud so much that it just looks absolutely insane when it's going through the forest. Now, am I able to get in this thing? How does this work? There we go. And it's a little bit dark in here because I'm kind of like in this warehouse situation. But, dude, it's got the key. <laughs> this thing's pretty cool. It looks like it's got a low and high gear. And there's the ignition. Oh, will this thing turn on? Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, she runs. See, this is the damage. This is the plastic that came off. The suspension looks good. The tires look kind of worn, but not too bad. This thing stinks of fuel. It, it smells like it's running a little rich, but I don't know if that's normal. The mirror is cracked over here. That's not a biggie. I'm surprised it's still there. <laughs> it looks like they took the little drain plugs out. I think they have that as a factory option so you can relieve all the stuff in here. It's even got the oh shit handlebars. It's kind of cool. But the engine sounds really nice. These are very simple. They're so light. Oh, it's even got power steering, not bad. I think the hardest thing about owning one of these is just having the space for it, you know? You can't just like leave this parked in your driveway. You gotta keep it in a safe spot, but still very, very cool. I also see now as I look at it closer that the roof right here took a big hit. You see how this? got crinkled right there. But I mean, th that's what happens with these things. They roll over all the time. It's very common, especially in rallycross. I've seen it before where they just rolled it over and a bunch of people just ran to the car, tipped it back and it was on its way. So they're kind of designed for that, you know? Yeah, okay, now things are starting to make more sense. As I look at the roof, this is where all the damage is at. So somebody rolled this thing. But again, you just replace this. The tubing looks okay. It's not great, but you can still get in and out of it. If you don't care about the way it looks and you just want to have fun, I think this is pretty solid. That's pretty cool. All 
All right, now next to the BRZ, I saw this Fiat 500. And it seems like from the last video that I did on that Fiat 500 Abarth that people are pretty opinionated on these, but this one's actually mint, literally. <laughs> I mean, check out the wheels. That's a really unique color. It's kind of giving me like Christmas vibes, but I don't know what they were going for with that. I, I appreciate the ingenuity behind the color. And there's not too much to these cars. I mean, they're so small, so there's not too much to talk about here. But I mean, if you want something that's a two door, lightweight and good fun to drive, I mean, this one's even got a manual transmission. So usually when I see these, they're either have horrible mechanical issues or yeah, mostly horrible mechanical issues, <laughs> unless it's been in an accident but usually those ones just get immediately taken to the crusher because this is technically a Fiat Chrysler. I'm not trying to write these off as like the worst purchase in the world, but just kind of get ready that you're signing yourself up for basically buying a Chrysler. Now it does have these uh, fogged up rear tail lights. So I don't know if these need some attention. It looks like some moisture is getting on the inside, but the body itself is really clean and makes you wonder why it's here. Open the trunk. Yeah, these are really cute little cars, man. These are really awesome. I don't know if I would personally own one. I think for like a rental car, I think these would be proper good fun. And when you go over to other parts of the world, like I remember being in the UK, you see these things everywhere, all over the place. People just zipping around in them. They make for really good city cars or something on narrow streets. What I love most about this car though is these side mirrors. I mean, it's even got this little visor on the top that guards the rain when it comes down. And it also has like the second portion of the mirror. And I just thought that that was a really cool detail. I don't know if they come from the factory like that, but let's, let's hop in here because it looks like it's got some juice in the battery. So I'm curious if this thing will run. And maybe I shouldn't be so speculative about the mechanical damage. Just, but just from my experience, uh, being here and doing all this stuff that usually when I see these, they have some sort of horrible mechanical issues. Now let's go through the gears. One, two, three, four, five. And you know, I can get down with the dash mounted shifters. You know, this kind of reminds me of like the old Alfa Romeo spiders where they have the dash mounted shifter because when you're driving, your hand doesn't have to travel as far to shift the gears. And it actually makes a lot of ergonomic sense why they would do that instead of you having to go all the way to the floor uh, like in other pedestrian cars. So, okay, things are powering up. That's a good sign. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, this thing is not running well at all. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's bucking it feels like a bucking bronco something something's going on whoa and it stinks it smells like oil and it's backfiring too yeah so, something's really wrong with this guy I'm gonna turn it off it's clacking smoking <laughs> Smells horrible. Man. Okay, so I guess I wasn't wrong. These things, yeah, that's just a Fiat for you. I don't know what was coming out the back. It, it, it's pretty cold today, so it could have been condensation, but it almost looked like it was burning coolant. It looked like very white smoke, but it smells like oil. So maybe oil's getting past the piston rings, blown turbo. I've also seen that too. These these are pretty common blown turbos. Let's see if I can get this left. And I mean, how are you supposed to work on this thing? There's no room to do anything in this car, period. But now that I think about it, I don't think these are actually turbocharged. I think it's the Abarths that are turbocharged. So it, it's it's gotta be something internal with the engine. That's why they dumped it. Yeah, shame. It is a good looking little paperweight though. All right, guys, I'm looking at this Toyota Land Cruiser, and this one has over 300,000 miles, but it still looks like it has a lot of life left in it because these old Toyotas do not die. This one doesn't look like it's the cleanest example in the world, but hey, 
I'm sure this car is still gonna go for a lot, which is unfortunate because I wish you could get these things for a dime a dozen, but these command a premium and there's a reason why. And it's due to the fact that these hold their value so well, no matter what the condition is. There's gonna be its imperfections here and there. I see some dents in the roof. So it looks like maybe they dropped something or they were using the roof rack to hold something down that was too heavy for it. The, there was a little bit of body damage in the front. I see some of the paint is coming off of this side molding. You know, it's just very uh, little things here and there. It would really be a shame to see this thing get crushed. It's got the rear toe hitch. I do see some rust developing on it, but it doesn't look too bad. The tires are definitely old. I don't know if they're mismatched or not, but they should be replaced relatively soon. But I like these, man. And I remember it was such a flex back in the day when you had a Toyota or a Lexus with the gold badging. That's just like a level of eliteness when it comes to these old Toyotas. <laughs> Let's take a look at the inside. It, uh, it doesn't smell great. It's not clean. I mean, there's a jug of coolant. That's never, uh, never a good sign, but it doesn't look half bad, really. I love the fact that you can move these rear seats up like that. I think in the Toyota Previas, you can also do that. Uh, one of my friends has one and it does the same exact thing. It's pretty cool. Let's see if I can pull up the exact mileage for you guys up here. Now it looks like the plastic trim's coming off for the window switches, the seats got some tears, the bolsters look worn, and it's got, I feel a little focus here, 317,000 miles. And honestly, this car smells like 317,000 miles of farts. I mean, dude, they gotta, you guys gotta clean this thing. But it, it's so weird at just like the wear because it's just like everywhere there's something that's out of place you know, but it does have the original Toyota stereo with the cassette and CD. I mean, that's remarkable. And it doesn't know if this is a run or drive. If this was a run and drive, there would actually be a D on the windshield and I don't see that. So maybe this does have mechanical issues. So let's pop the hood. And in terms of this front bumper, I don't see any structural damage beyond just uh, this itself. I see the frame coming out and it looks okay. And uh, another thing you also want to look for, for something like this that has so many miles, is you want to see the rust. Because if they've done a lot of winters in this thing, it could be a disaster. But like I said, these tires, whew, those, those are really worn. But I'm looking at down here, and it looks pretty rust-free. I even see they replaced the struts. These look brand new. Like, I could lick this. It's so clean. It's very out of place. They must have just replaced those struts. Let's check the rear. Wow, this one actually is really clean. The rear hitch is a little rusty, but not half bad. Random bolts. All right, let's uh, pop open the hood on this bad boy. Let's see here. Yeah, it looks okay. Looks half decent. The, the belt looks... Yeah, the belt looks okay, but I do see a little bit of infestation. It looks like maybe a rat or something was there, but yeah, not bad. All right, guys, I just came across this Toyota Tacoma SR5. Now this is the V6 model, and I could just tell right off the bat that somebody really liked this truck. I mean, look at how aggressive these tires are. They look to be in excellent condition. I can even see the little whiskers still on them. Now. The whole reason this thing is here is because of the front end damage. Kind of twisted the front, but really it's not as bad as you would think. And I think what saved this whole front end is this ARB front bumper, or, or the bash bar, whatever you want to call it. But these are worth a lot of money. These are, this is like top dollar accessory right here for these trucks. And it looks like it took the brute force of it. And in terms of uh, frame damage, this all got punched back but I'm willing to bet that this thing still runs. It doesn't look like it hurt anything from the engine side. Uh, the core support, of course, got pushed back. The, I'm sure the whole front bumper reinforcement got pushed back. But for somebody to pull this back out, it's very doable. And I think it's really worth it on a, on a Toyota pickup like this. But the thing is, you have to remember that these are worth their weight in gold. So there's gonna be quite a bit of people bidding on this one. It's nice though, man. Now, the one thing you wanna look for on these Tacomas is you wanna look underneath because they tend to start rusting and it looks like this one's, it's getting there. It looks pretty rusty crusty underneath here, 
and eventually it'll get to a point where it almost becomes like cancer and there's just no saving it. Yeah, it's it's not great. It's not like terrible either. You can tell somebody really enjoyed this for what it is. It's got the tow hitch. Yeah, nice one. Looks like it's got some seat covers in the back. Let's check this back door over here. The interior is not half bad. It's an automatic, but in America, I feel like 90% of cars on the road are automatic. So let's see if this thing will fire up. Really curious. I think I like the four cylinders a little bit better than the six, if I'm being honest with you, when it comes to this generation of uh, Toyota pickup. It's got the double din stereo and uh, hey, it's not even half bad. Let's see if it'll fire. Oh yeah. Oh, squeaky belt. Very squeaky belt. That could be due to the body damage. But uh, yeah, not bad. Okay, so I'm looking at this Mercedes 300D turbo diesel. And these old turbo diesel Mercedes do not die. Unfortunately, this one may have finally met its demise. Now this one actually has the hood ornament for once at an auction, it actually has it. Half the time I see these, people like to just uh, steal these, you know, you can make like a chain out of it or just to be a complete jerk, you know? It's, it's pretty commonplace to see that. And the body on this one actually looks really good. You know, it's got some little accessories on it. I do see that it has like the sunroof visor. So whoever owned this car, they really liked it. And typically with these old Mercedes, there's never an in-between. It's either they look really nice or they're completely clapped out. And this one actually looks pretty good. It may be worth fixing, but since this one doesn't have body damage, I'm almost certain that this one has mechanical issues. Stuff's growing on the back of it, but I mean, really like the trim looks okay. And if you just give it a nice pressure wash, I think this thing would clean up really nice. Again, there's just like things growing on the inside. So it's sat. I'm looking for rust. Usually pretty common places you'll see rust start to develop on the, on the top of the sunroof, but this one actually looks okay. I'm gonna check the rear wheel wells. That's also a very common place for rust to develop. Yep, there it is. Okay, so there is rust bubbling up on this thing. So usually when you see it on the outside like this, that tells you right then and there that the undercarriage is gonna be also like that as well. So this might be uh, rusty crusty, unfortunately. I see that the tires are dry rotting. So for anybody that doesn't know, when you start to see tires split like that, that's not a good sign. That means that these are very, very, very old. I don't actually see the date on them, nor does it really matter because they're dry rotted. They're not good. The interior, yeah, it's, it's not great in here. It, if I'm being honest, it's pretty dirty. This poor thing. But I'm, I'm willing to bet, I haven't even looked at the mileage, it's gonna be a gazillion miles. Watch, I know for a fact because these things really don't die until you get them to this point. And this poor thing probably got tortured. Look at that. 363,000 miles. Dude, homie drove this to the moon and back. Oh my God. Wow, look at this Kenwood. You know, back in the day, I used to always want a Kenwood just like this in my car. This is like an elite flex. Which is kind of funny nowadays, you can get a stereo for like 15, 20 bucks off some third party brand. But back in the day, man, that was like you were living the life. It's got the custom little uh, dash mat and the dash actually looks really pristine. Just kind of surprising. I thought it was gonna be all cracked up. We could take a look at the engine. Let's see here. I forgot, is it? Is there like a little thing that comes out? I forgot how to open the hood on these old Mercs. You know what? I honestly don't know how to open the hood. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you, you kind of get the point with this car. I don't even think I need to open the hood. I'm sure something mechanically is wrong with it. So, shame, but I think this one has done its time and lived a long, fruitful life. All right, so I'm in the back of the lot and they have like this uh, space tucked away for I think cars that they don't wanna keep out in the elements because they're a little too nice. And this one is a Ford Fairlane. 
Now I don't, I don't know too much about these classic American cars, but what I do want to say is I love this color scheme. This looks like, uh, what's that ice cream? Uh, God, what is that mint ice cream? They used to have it at Baskin Robbins. I don't know, maybe somebody in the comments can uh, figure out what I'm trying to talk about here, but it reminds me of that. It had the little chocolate chips in it. Uh, God, that's gonna drive me nuts. Now this is a Ford Fairlane, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly why this is here at a vehicle auction. And it's pretty tragic, honestly. It looks like they might have hit a deer or something. Now the first thing you're gonna see is this little trim piece is falling off. I mean, that, that looks super easy, but what doesn't look super easy is all of this. This looks like if, if you were gonna hit a deer, they came in contact over here, and then they maybe rolled over, and then they went right into the windshield. And I do see some sort of a vegetation on there. It looks like maybe some wood. So maybe they hit a tree. I, I don't know what happened here. But they definitely went off road because you can see by all the dirt and mud and the pop tire and even more branches and stuff like that. It, th this thing went off the road. Maybe they were cruising on the highway, tire popped, went onto the road. But it, it looks like from the front end, it looks okay. Everything's just kind of misplaced. It's just like very slightly off. I do see one of the trim pieces for the headlight is missing. So you would need to find that. I'm sure that there's a aftermarket parts uh, department for these still, hopefully. Uh, you're missing the mirror, but the rest of the body looks really nice. This looks like somebody keeps it in a garage and takes it out maybe like once or twice a year and drives it around. You know, maybe takes it to a car show. And uh, it looks like this is the town sedan. But man, these, these classic American cars, this is when they were making amazing looking cars. I mean, just the way everything is sculpted, it's really is just like a thing of art. I love the lines on the taillight. This is so cool. So for somebody that has the space for it, you can definitely put this one back together. I see some of the headliners starting to come apart. I can't open that door. Maybe I can open the driver's door. Uh huh, wow. I mean, dude, look at the interior, man. This thing is clean, clean. Even smells nice. Oh yeah, somebody, somebody loved this car to death. Must have just killed them to take it to the auction. I'm shocked they even did that, you know? The seats look like they've been freshly reupholstered. It smells like leather in here. It smells like really high quality leather. And it looks like it's got some uh, certification for the glass. I don't know what that's all about. Pretty cool. Let's, let's hop in here real quick though. It says power brake. Wow, I haven't seen that in a long time. That was a luxury way back in the day. I mean, there's something about these tactile switches in these old cars that are just really neat. Definitely fun to tinker about with. It looks like they put some sort of aftermarket gauges, maybe just to keep an eye on oil pressure, the battery, and the temperature uh, when it's operating. Yeah, this just screams classic. You know, a really, 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 really long time ago, I had this Ford Falcon. I didn't own it for long, but this really reminds me of that car. Just the interior with the bench seats, but I sold it and it had some of the worst brakes ever put into an automobile, I swear. This doesn't look factory. This looks like somebody put this in some sort of storage compartment, but maybe uh, one of you guys can let me know in the comments. Nice little steering wheel. It's got the keys. I'm sure this thing fires up. Wow, look at this bottle opener. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, wow. Even the headliner looks nice. I'm sure this one's gonna go for big money. But it's nice, man. Very cool. All right, guys, I'm looking at this Toyota Celica. Now, this is pretty old school. It's got the pop-up headlights. These are kind of slept on. I always thought that these were super cool. But what I found most fascinating about this is it has mini wheels. So it must just be like a traditional four x 100 lug pattern. So you'd be able to just slap anything on this thing. And these are tough, really. But it looks like this is not a runner. So maybe it has a uh, engine or transmission issues. It's got 88,000 miles on the clock. And I mean, for a Toyota, that's nothing, man. Oh yeah. Okay, so I think things are starting to make more sense. We got a screwdriver. We got the whole entire <laughs> steering column down in pieces. I think this car was stolen. Or somebody was trying to fix something because I see a bunch of screws down here. And I don't know if a, a thief would make the time and attention to be able to do that, but it looks like it's got a residue of tobacco or something like that. So they're probably a pretty heavy smoker. It doesn't smell great in here, but the interior is all here. 
yeah, it's not half bad. It has a lot of potential, honestly. But the paint doesn't look so great on the rear. Yeah, it does not look great. It, I mean, it's just, this thing must have sat for a long time. I've never ever actually seen a spoiler deteriorate to this point. It's almost like somebody sanded this down. But it could just be cheap paint. And over time, it just kind of slowly fades away. But it almost looks like somebody's sanding this down. It looks like somebody was prepping to paint this, but maybe that's just me. And it looks like this is an STX. I don't think I've ever heard of that. I think they came as like the ST, GT, and the GTS. But maybe somebody in the comments can let me know. It's a good looking car though. Let's check out the hood. See how it looks. If I can get to it. Hmm. Dude, I think they, did they take the latch? Oh no, there it is. I think they ruined the latch. God, it's terrible. Well, that's okay. Well, I'll let this one rest. Take a look at the front one more time. It's got the moss developing vegetation. Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen with this guy, but hopefully somebody saves it. All right guys, we're looking at this Honda Civic Del Sol. And this is actually my second time seeing this car. And I've already made a video on this uh, in a YouTube short form. So if you wanna check that out, I'll make sure to leave a link above. But I keep coming back to this car and I've been keeping an eye on it because I really, really like this thing. Now, since this is a JDM import, uh, the rule is in America is if it's over 25 years old, you can legally import these cars to America and drive them on the street. Now, this one to start things off is gonna be, as we just mentioned, a right-hand drive vehicle. But it looks like uh, moisture has started to come inside the car, which is very unfortunate. So maybe uh, the target top could be leaking. It could just be the window is not lining up correctly, but it rains a lot here. So I'm actually not surprised by that at all. And my favorite feature of this car is going to be the little courtesy light. I love that about this car, but it's got the Momo wheel. I don't know if that's a factory shifter. I don't ever think I've seen a Del Sol with that tall of a shifter, but for the Honda boys and girls out there, these seats are awesome and they swap into any Civic or Integra. So just in case you wanted to know that, but these, even the seats alone, they cost top dollar. And that's the unfortunate thing about these Hondas is sometimes they're worth more in parts than they are as just being the entire car. So that's just kind of where things are at. But Chris Fix owns one, so it must be pretty good, right? So it's got the Momo Corsa wheel, like I just mentioned, 67,000 kilometers on the clock. I don't know what the math is on that, but that is very low mileage. I mean, dude, this is an old car and it looks like they didn't drive it too much. And I'm almost certain the battery's gonna be dead because I'm, I'm almost certain people have been walking by trying to start this thing. But I actually was able to fire it up before and it was very smooth. So the best part with these cars is they come with the JDM B16A. Now these are like the red top, high compression, high revving B series motors. And the thing is, like I said earlier, these cars are worth more in parts than they are as a whole. And these nowadays are actually going for a pretty penny, even though we're kind of going to the K series revolution right now. Everybody's K swapping everything, but the whole reason the K series exists is because of these B series. And I will say that this one has been meticulously kept. I can see, I don't know if this is some sort of VTEC solenoid that's been replaced. I don't know what this is, MPC Motorsport, but I believe this is going to the camshaft. And uh, it looks like the spark plug wires, these are NGKs, really nice. The distributor looks like it's brand new. It's got a lot of good parts on here. Got a nice battery. So whoever had this, they really liked it. And it looks like this might even be a factory uh, strut tower brace, which I've actually never seen in an old Honda before. That's pretty cool. So. Let's take a look around the rest of the car. It looks like it's got these tires that are pretty bald. I think what happened here is they had a really nice set of wheels and tires and they swapped out these, uh, what we like to call burners. So it's got slotted rotors. And yeah, slotted and drilled rotors actually. Nice. Take a look at the rear. This is what it looks like. And then it's got this aftermarket exhaust. I don't know what that is. Is that Skunk 2? Yeah. Looks to be in good shape. But the thing with this car is it has undercarriage damage. So that can mean a lot of different things. 
typically a roll of the dice, but I guess we'll have to see. Now you see that some of the pieces on the stickers for the trim for the uh, options, I think this is like fog lights and your hazards. They look like they're starting to deteriorate a little bit. It's got the cool little Kenwood here. And you can hide that through that cubby hole. And yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a two seater. It's very small in here and there's not too much to it. Um, I believe this window rolls down. So when you put the target top uh, off, I don't know if that rolls up and down. I could be wrong though. But this comes off, so it's almost like a Miata in a sense. All right guys, I think I'm gonna end today's video here with a lot full of Teslas. <laughs> it looks like nobody's buying these things. Kinda interesting. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.